scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. James chapter 1 and verse 25. Apostle James was charging the brethren and he says, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein not just to look into the perfect law but to continue therein he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work he says this man shall be blessed in his deed may i remind us again that church it's not just a place for fun fair, even though there is joy and rejoicing in the presence of God. That every time we're gathered before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, it is a time for encounters, moments of transformation and impartation. We look into that perfect law of liberty. And the Bible says, as we behold him as in a mirror, we are changed. Hallelujah. So every time you have an opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord, you must be very intentional and you must be very determined. Do not be careless with his presence. Jacob in chapter 28 of Genesis said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. The consequence for his lack of discernment will be over 20 years of hardship in the house of Laban. And then in chapter 32, God would come to him again. This time he was prepared. He dismissed his wives, his cattle. When he was alone, the Bible says a man came to him and he held him and said, leave me for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he says, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He blessed him. He touched the hollow of his thigh. And the Bible says, the sun arose and he called that place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. We also learn from Jacob the necessary and sufficient condition for any ministry and any platform to be called the house of God. Even if you have the poster or the picture of the cross it does not qualify the place to be called the house of God there are two conditions according to Jacob's encounter in chapter 28 that qualifies any place to be called the house of God number one there was a ladder that connected that place right to the heavens hallelujah when Jacob woke up he said surely the Lord was in this place he says this is the gate of heaven there has to be a ladder, a system that connects the earth to the heavens. Number two, he says at the top of it was God himself and God began to speak, revealing himself. So there must be an encounter with heaven and we must hear the voice of God. If we cannot hear the voice of God in that platform, it is not the house of God. You cannot be in my house indefinitely and never hear my voice. Is it really true then that it is my house? But this is your house, your home, 
we welcome you lord we welcome you this is your house your I've come here to challenge us tonight. It is my assignment under God to help us primarily have encounters with the Lord Jesus Christ and then to be empowered even as we serve his purposes within our lifetime. Tonight I'm teaching on the testimony of Enoch. The testimony of Enoch. This is a charge to draw our hearts towards deeper intimacy with God. Hallelujah. Let's begin our discussion tonight with Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12, the testimony of Enoch. One of the ways that we learn God and one of the ways that we grow in the kingdom, please let me have your attention, one of the scripturally recommended pathways to spiritual growth is number one to press for direct encounters with God through his word and through the ministry of the Holy Spirit but number two to follow carefully and to learn from those who have gone ahead either historically or currently alive Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 it says that ye be not slothful but followers of them so there are some them that are worth following who through faith and patience inherit the promises the bible says to not be slothful please help those under the anointing and it says to be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise that means one of the ways that we press towards the things of god one of the ways that we grow spiritually is to find models and references that have been able to through their lives capture rich dimensions of god to study them for instance if you want to study what it means to be blessed in the kingdom without losing your soul the recommended personality for study is abraham he says look unto abraham your father and to sarah that body he says for i called him alone and i blessed him and i increased him that means if your pattern of becoming prosperous is not in the order of abraham you will meet error and you will meet disaster somewhere there are many other parts of prosperity but the the scripturally defined pathway that defines a blessed man is that man abraham if you desire to encounter the God of heaven, encounters that transform, the recommended personality to follow and learn his doings with God is Jacob. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? Psalm 24. It says, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, that he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and even righteousness from the God of his salvation. And then it says, this is the generation, verse 6, of them that seek him. It says that seek thy face. The original translation says, O God of Jacob because one of the gifts you get when you can trap a dimension of god in your life is god will name himself after you in honor to your press the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob at the end of your life if you walk with god properly it should be safe to say the God of this and that, not as a ritual for human worship, but that trapped within that experience is an experience of God you are leaving behind for a generation to learn God more. Until Abraham walked with God in a certain way, we did not know who the God of Abraham was. I hope you know that the operation of the God of Abraham is not the same as the operation of the God of Isaac. The same way you have seven spirits seven operations but it's still the same spirit hallelujah if you are learning faith according to scripture you refer to many people abraham and then even in the new testament you come to apostle peter and you learn jesus himself 
spoke to him as touching the matters of faith satan had desired to sift you like wheat he says but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when you are converted now with this knowledge strengthen your brethren are we learning when you want to study one who is the epitome of favor in the scripture you will have to go to the book of esther and study the entire book of esther the book was captured in the name of a woman that was the book where the woman never used a sword and yet she defeated everyone who was antichrist then you learn favor you want to learn deliverance proper deliverance you have to study the exodus the life and the exodus of israel in egypt the entire journey even to the promised land is the most concise definition of the deliverance of a people the things that are written aforetime romans 15 4 romans 15 4 the things that are written aforetime the bible says they were written for our learning are we still together that we through patience and comfort of scripture might have hope that means it is not unscriptural to isolate biblical personalities and study them with a view to drawing from their lives and their stories dimensions of god that will aid our growth and our excelling in the kingdom and tonight we have decided to study the man enoch genesis chapter 5 gives us the first expression of this man enoch there is a first enoch that was the son of cain this is not the one we are talking about genesis chapter 5 the Bible tells us a few very important information about this man called Enoch. 5.18, 5 and verse 18. It tells us that Jared lived 160 and two years and he begat Enoch. So Enoch was a man who was born physically of earthly origin. His father being Jared now go to verse 21 please same genesis chapter 5 the bible says and enoch lived 60 and 5 years and he begat methuselah so we see that enoch was a human being in every way he had a son methuselah and for your bible knowledge you know that this was the oldest living man as recorded in scripture hallelujah you also study when you study and count through the genealogies written in the bible you will find out that enoch was the great grandfather of noah hebrews chapter 11 and verse 14 gives us another very vital information hebrews chapter 11 did i get that right Jude 1, is it Jude 1? Jude 1, 14, my apologies. Jude 1, 14. Jude 1, 14. Please look for it for me. The seventh man, it gives us an information. And Enoch also, thank you. Jude chapter 1 and verse 14. Jude and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam. Now, I don't mean to create any controversy here, but did you notice the Bible never said the seventh from creation? It said the seventh from Adam. Because even before Adam, there is an old story. Is that true? So the counting for our dispensation begins from Adam. Adam was the first man created in the image and the likeness of God created in the image and the likeness of god that you want to find out a lot of all these details you have to go to the book of job and examine job's contemplations in the face of his tragedy he began a discourse with god and in he began to communicate wisdom and he told us how that the earth was founded and that the sons of god sang for joy 
that was not an account that was captured in Genesis hallelujah the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth he says now the earth was dark void formless and the face the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the deep theologically speaking we call it the gap theory It's an attempt to explain the happenings that happened that occurred from the beginning of creation as we know as recorded in Scripture this darkness and chaos is from the Hebrew word tohu wa bohu, confusion and chaos. That something had happened. We see that Genesis 1 and 2 already contrast themselves because the character of God's creation is that if he creates, it must be good. Now we see chaos. That means that something else must have occurred here. Are we together? And then in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3, so what you call the original creation theologically speaking was the recreation of earth not the first creation the recreation of earth so what you call eternity or what you call dispensations our dispensation is not the first recorded in scripture the earth is barely a little above or a little close to two three thousand years as we know from adam but scientists have been able to carbon date rocks and they have found archaeological sites that are tens of thousands of years is that true that is to tell you there is more there is more than we know but the bible says sufficient for us are the things that are already written for our learning that means you don't need to feel bad that you do not know certain things all that you need within your dispensation to learn god can be found within the volume of that which is written so that the blind search for things that are not written is unnecessary he says that whatever you are trying to find in the things that are not written they can be found by the spirit from the things that are already written are we learning scripture is sufficient in partnership with the Holy Spirit to help the believer learn God to the fullest as far as knowing God in this phase of life is concerned if you're with me say amen. amen so back to Enoch the Bible tells us in Jude 1 14 that Enoch was the seventh man from Adam and that he prophesied of certain things we're getting there a quick recap about Enoch number one that he was the son of Jared Genesis 5 18 number two he was the father of Methuselah Genesis 5 21 he was also the great grandfather of Noah when you count and he was the seventh man from creation hallelujah then the Bible tells us that he lived for 365 years before he was taken by God he lived for 365 years now there are very three important uh, facts about Enoch that concern us in this brief discussion tonight as we pray three important facts about Enoch number one is found in Genesis chapter 5 22 and then 24 Genesis chapter 5 please the Bible says an Enoch walked with God an Enoch walked with God please keep 22 again and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters in spite of his normal life living his normal human life the Bible isolated that man to give us a very important information that he walked with God as though the rest did not walk with God why would the Bible isolate this man we see from Scripture Noah walked with God several other people walked with God but there was something about Enoch and his walk with God the Bible had to isolate that experience and to repeat it twice verse 24 Genesis 5 again the Bible says and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him now this is very powerful he walked with God verse 22 it's an information the Bible gives us while bearing children and living his human life he walked with God 
and then another dimension of press verse 24 that he walked with God to a point that he did not taste natural death he says for God took him it's important for us to know who took him because there are many things about Enoch we need to study Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning if the Bible left us in the dark as to who took him, we have a right to conclude that he backslided or something happened or he disappeared. But the Bible says God himself took him. That means we are sure of the end of the man. We can trust whatever is written about him for our learning. Is someone learning now? Enoch walked with God. Information number one. Number two, the second information about Enoch is found in Jude 1 okay Hebrews 11 verse 5 I meant to say Hebrews 11 and verse 5 that's where we find the second information it says by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him watch this now for before his translation he had this testimony not that he lived long not that he was a prophet and he prophesied accurately not that he had many children and one of his sons became the longest living man there were many other things that were worthy testimonies but here Paul is speaking to the the Hebrews and he tells them that he had this testimony that he pleased God what a testimony the second fact about him is that he had a testimony that he pleased God. Number three is found in Judges chapter 1. Judges chapter 1. And we'll begin our reading from verse 14. We're reading down to 25. Not, I said Judges, Jude. My apologies, Jude 1, 14 to 25. Jude has only one chapter. Now watch this. The Bible says, and Enoch also the seven from Adam prophesied. So that guy was not an ordinary man. He was not just a family man. He prophesied of this saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. We're reading to 25. Next verse. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him uh-huh these are murmurers complainers walking after their own lusts and their own mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage Look at what this guy was prophesying. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of the Lord. We're reading to 25. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. 19. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. 22. It says, and of some have compassion, making a difference. 23. And others save with fear, pulling them out of fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Two more verses. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. 25, the last verse. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So we see here that the reference was made to the prophecy of Enoch. That Enoch prophesied and he warned the people in his generation. Because we need to examine, the Bible says two very important things about him. That number one, he walked with God. And two, he had a testimony that he pleased God. And we see him prophesying and bringing a word of caution 
even to his generation about decadence and bringing them to righteousness to pursue the one true God the testimony of Enoch when people pass on to glory in most grave sites and burial grounds when you pass a burial ground especially very organized burial grounds you have an opportunity to look usually they would have an epitaph that they write across those burial grounds they would write something that summarizes the life of the person who is in that grave something he did within his lifetime maybe he lived and blessed people maybe he was a great footballer maybe he was a professional boxer they write something there that just encourages you to know that this man right here that was a testimony was one of the most notable things that he did and the bible says as for enoch if you will ever remember enoch for anything beyond being the father of metisola uh, of, of Methuselah the son of Jared he says you must have this testimony at the back of your mind he walked with God and he pleased God there are two questions that we are going to draw from this teaching tonight and that is my emphasis and then we'll pray two questions that we have to answer if we are able to answer these questions successfully then truly we would have understood and even captured into our own spiritual experience the testimony of Enoch please write this down question one what does it mean and what does it take to walk with God the first question we need to examine tonight question one what does it mean and what does it take to walk with God because the Bible says that Enoch walked with God if you desire that kind of testimony within your lifetime and at the end of your life then we must be able to study from Scripture what does it mean and what does it take to walk with God the answer to this question is found in a discussion that Jesus himself gave Matthew chapter 19 Matthew chapter 19 will begin our reading from verse 30 please patiently follow while I read it had to do this whole discussion began with children Matthew chapter 19 from verse 13 that is the last verse 13 Matthew 19 13 the Bible says and then were there brought unto him little children this is where the discussion began now with little children that he should put his hands on them and pray and the disciples rebuked them Jesus is busy leave these children away and then a rebuke comes immediately verse 14 we are reading to 30 media let's work together but Jesus said suffer little children and forbid them the word suffer means permit allow and forbid them not to come to me for there is a lesson you need to learn about their lives he says the kingdom for such for such that means there is a state that a little child has that until you attain that state you will not be able to walk in the experience of the kingdom he says that when you see little children coming to me instead of being busy doing protocol driving them away use them as a lesson to learn something about what it takes to have the experience of the kingdom verse 15 and he laid his hands on them and departed thence 16 and behold one came and said unto him good master what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life he comes to meet Jesus now 17 Jesus replies he said unto him why callest thou me good there is none good but one that is God but if thou will enter into life keep the commandments next verse he said unto him which Jesus said thou shalt do no murder thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness 19 honor thy father and thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself verse 20 
the young man said unto him all these i have kept from my youth what lack i yet now here is the test jesus said unto him if thou will be perfect you have tried oh but i see that you desire a deeper level here is the next condition go and sell thou that has that thou has and give it to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven after you have sold everything come and follow me don't follow me with those things you really want to follow me you really want to walk with me here is the condition go and sell everything that can steal my place in your life when you are empty of them when you are ready to be empty he says come and follow me watch what happened to the man he was a good man 23 verse 22 he says but when the young man had this saying he went away sorrowful why because he had many great possessions jesus observed him walking sorrowfully and he said verily verily i say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven and again i say unto you it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of god 25 when his disciples heard it they were exceedingly amazed and said who then can be saved if they were poor that statement would not have concerned them are we together there was something he said that affected they said no 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 hold on what is this that you just said who then can be saved but jesus beheld them and said with men this is impossible but with god all things are possible we're reading to 30 27 then answered peter and said unto him behold we have forsaken all now listen carefully remember what jesus told the man he said to follow me if you really want to walk with me there has to be a forsaking you are going to sell some things then it's not that you convert it liquidate it to cash and keep it there's a principle he was establishing there he says until you are empty of everything that represents your worth you cannot follow me now peter is saying okay what you are telling that man to do we have done it already behold we have forsaken all and followed thee what shall we have therefore 28 jesus said unto him verily verily i say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne in his glory ye shall also sit upon 12 stones judging the 12 tribes of israel 29 and everyone that had forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother while i'm listing it be looking at it and tell me which one is not important let me repeat are you ready houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land ah, to follow you about jesus you are the one who provided all of this and now you are listing what else is more important than these things houses brethren destiny help us inclusive sisters father mother wife children lands what else is left it says for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life and enoch walked with god hmm. What does it take and what does it mean to walk with God? Write this down. To walk with God means that he becomes the absolute priority of your life and of your destiny. To walk with God means that he becomes the absolute priority of your life and your destiny. To love, to, to walk with God means that he becomes the absolute priority of your life and 
your destiny. The Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. Number two, to walk with God means to love him and to walk in total surrender. To walk with God means to love him and to walk in total surrender. Matthew chapter 22, please. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 35. Jesus is teaching us to, to walk with God means to love him and to walk in total surrender. Matthew 25 from verse 30, 22 from verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, uh-huh, next verse. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Is that in your Bible? With all thy soul and with all thy mind. Expressions that mean with your everything. Next verse. It says, This is the first and great commandment then 39 we're reading to 40 39 and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself 40 it says on these two commandments that means all of those laws that were given were only to achieve this to bring you to a point where in experience can you imagine that every law that was given to the nation of Israel, whether the Ten Commandments or the laws that came that governed their lives, these were all natural ways of constraining them to a point where in experience they would love the Lord with all their hearts, all their souls, all their strength. On these two commandments, that means you only qualify to push away all of them. If you are ready to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mark chapter 3 from verse 13. We're reading to 15. Mark chapter 3. Is someone learning already? The Bible says, And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him, whom he would and they came unto him this is jesus calling men to walk with him the bible says listen please especially if you are a servant of the lord jesus serving in ministry here the bible says he ordained 12 that they should be with him first and then he might send them forth to preach 15. he says and to have power to heal sickness where does the power come from from the walking with him and to cast out devils he called them that they should walk with him first. You may have heard me say it again and again, that when God, call, when God calls you, he says, follow me, not follow it. When you come to God and you are following it, it can mean anything. Prosperity, ministry, fame, business, any other thing that represents the basis of your seeking God outside of him is idolatry. Are we together? Do you know you can love heaven more than God? It is still idolatry. It is not heaven we worship. It is him that sits on the throne. Are we together? What makes heaven heaven is not the place. What makes heaven heaven is the presence of Jesus. You have to understand this. You want to walk with God? You must love him sincerely. This scripture is very powerful. You must love him more than ministry, love him more than activities. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. He called them and asked them to walk with him first. Now let's go to Acts 4 and 13 and see what happened there. This was after healing the man at gates beautiful now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with jesus not that they were powerful anointed men of god not that they were great giants and champions they had been with jesus
and Enoch walked with God meant that do you know if the Bible never told us anything about his family life his ministry and others we may assume that he only walked with God because there was nothing else that mattered in his life so the Bible takes out time to tell us that he had a grandfather he had a father he had a wife he had children he had a life he even had a ministry yet none of them came close to him his testimony was not connected to any one of these. and Enoch walked with God in spite of his genealogy, in spite of his ability to have prophesied accurately, he walked with God. You desire the testimony of Enoch, you must desire to walk with God. To walk with God does not mean to neglect anything and everything he has given you, but that you exalt him to a point and a position where with respect to him and compared to him, absolutely nothing absolutely nothing can take his place we live in a world today and this has been my call for many years and it remains my call to the body of Christ listen to my message what seekest thou we need to return back to a place where we stop using God and using religiosity and spirituality just to get things God is calling us to a deeper relationship that is greater than breakthrough, that is greater than money, that is greater than impartation. God is calling us to himself, not to it. He's calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling us deeper 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 go and sell everything that came through your intellect through your providing value can i tell you jesus did not mean he should literally go and sell them when you sell something you relinquish ownership when you sell something you have parted with it He's saying, there is, when I look at you, I see that you desire me. But the reason why you have not been able to attain unto perfection is that there are many other things standing side by side with me. Every time I talk to believers, don't tell me you love the Lord. To what extent? Love has levels. We know that. Biology teaches us that. Psychology teaches us that. Love is not generic. There are four indices according to scripture that we use to measure love. Number one is passion. Number two is pleasure. Number three is commitment. Number four is sacrifice. Your love is not complete until these four components are captured in it. In genuine love, there must be passion. In genuine love, there must be commitment. In genuine love, there must be pleasure. And in genuine love, there must be sacrifice. The highest biblical index for measuring love is sacrifice. So when you say, Lord, I love you, he says, show me what you have laid down for me as proof that you love me. Hallelujah. Show me what you have laid down, the testimony of Enoch. When the Bible tells you Enoch walked with God, it means that he exalted God above his wife, above his children, above his prophetic ministry, above everything that represented relevance for him. This was what he was telling the rich man. He says, listen, you want to follow me? Prove to me that you love me and that I mean more to you than all of these things. And Peter now said, we have left everything. Jesus, I was a fisherman. You saw that I left everything to follow you. And he says, don't feel bad. Because can I tell you, when you truly leave everything, you will feel like a fool. If you have not felt like a fool and felt at a loss in following God, you are not yet there sacrifice is costly we have left all to follow you we have left all now we do not have any definition for our lives outside of you we are just following you and you've not told us anything 
I am an adult. I'm a married man with children, Peter must be saying. What is this one that we are following you every day? Where are we going to? And he says, I am more important to you than the assignment. How many people love the assignment more than Jesus? How many people love conferences and conventions more than Jesus? We men of God, how many of us love pulpit, preaching, ministry, healing, anointing, power? We will give up Jesus a thousand times to get power. And Enoch walked with God. I hope you know that you can walk for God and not walk with God. There, are men, there was a parable of the man who was calling people into the vineyard to walk. The basis of their going for many of them was negotiation. They negotiated for a denary. So they did not go to the vineyard because they loved him. They went to the vineyard because they had a contract. There are many contract Christians. Lord, I love you, but I'm giving you two months. I will be a worker. But after two months, if my breakthrough does not come, whatever you see, take it like that. What does it mean and what does it take to walk with God? Walking with God demands total surrender. Write it down. Total surrender. We've dealt with the teachings on the will of God. You can get that. Total surrender. Father, if it is possible, take this cup off me, he said. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Listen, until we get to points in our lives where the will of God and his desire becomes bigger than our ambitions and the things that we want and the things that drive our lives, there are levels of intimacy we can never get into. I submit to you that when you begin to walk with God, the first thing he does is to bring you through his word and his spirit to a place and a point in your Christian experience where he begins to dethrone every idol, even if that idol represents something good. It does not have to be evil. Once it is not God, it must go down. Two kings cannot sit on the same throne. Jesus and your intellect. Jesus and your gifts. Jesus and your connections, Jesus and your anointing, Jesus and your preaching prowess, Jesus and your ambition, Jesus and your family. He does not teach to be responsible or to be irresponsible. But he's telling you that compared to Jesus, he must stand in a place and a class all by himself. The Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah chapter 6, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. You can't see him until something dies. In the year that King Uzziah died, I now saw the real king sitting on a throne. In the year that my pride died, I saw the Lord. In the year that my loss died, I saw the Lord. In the year that my ambition, my obsession to be great and famous as compared to revealing and glorifying Jesus died, I saw the Lord. If you ever covet the testimony of Enoch in your life, the question you have to answer is, do I love the Lord? And there are clear indices if and when you love the Lord, the Bible does not leave you in the dark. There are proofs that you love the Lord. John 14, 21. John 14, 21, then we'll jump to 23. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. 1 John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. 1 John chapter 2 from verse 15. Love not the world, aha, uh -huh. neither the things that are in the world. 
The word love there comes from the word eros. Eros, an ungodly affinity, a passion and a drive for the things of this world that becomes higher than your pursuit of God. To love not the world does not mean you will not have the blessings. He made all things richly even for us to enjoy. But he says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, whether you are a preacher, whether you are a politician, whether you are a businessman, it doesn't matter who you are. He says the love of the Father is not in him. Then the next verse, he categorizes everything that is in the world into three main categories. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not in the Father. It's not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Lord, I love you. I love you. He said, mm -mm. Love is not an empty word. I will have to see. For God so loved the world. He would have said, Lord, world, I love you while we are suffering. But when he loved the world, he gave. And what he gave was his only. Can you give your only, not your many? When you get to a point where you can give your only, you love God. Your only. Hmm. What does it mean? And what does it take to walk with God? Total surrender. Total surrender. When he says, go left, left becomes where you go. Go right, right becomes where you go. Whether it is comfortable or uncomfortable, because where he leads you, you are willing to go. Listen, if you do not grow to this level, you will never attain unto maturity in the spirit. There is such an obsession for a Christianity of convenience. Listen, and you know, I would, I would always teach you the balance, the whole counsel of God. Please hear me. No matter what else you learn, if your love for God does not supersede the obsession for pleasure and the obsession for convenience, you cannot be mighty with God. We live in a world where our obsession for convenience is greater than our love and our pursuit for God. When a woman goes to the labor room, you can see the woman crying. In fact, not even the labor room, the entire process of the pregnancy. It is within her power to get tired one day and say, listen, I've made my contribution to this baby, I am tired but it's because she loves the baby more than her condition. Am I right on that? Men are saying yes. How in the world? Are we together? Have you seen what pregnancy does to an average woman? It will change everything about her. Oh, I want to eat food that has smoke smelling. I want to take this and then they bring it and the person says, I've, I've changed. I, I want something else. But in all of that, what she's carrying as painful as it is, is worth the process. Most believers complain because your love for Jesus is not strong enough to sponsor and provide the staying power, whether through storms, through rain, through whatever it is. Let me be fair to the man. When the man now goes to, you know, struggle out in life and bring something back home, even if he returns back with scars, he's happy that his family can feed. And just seeing the joy that he's able to meet the needs of those he loves will be more than every embarrassment and every suffering that he went through. Can I tell you? Every time Jesus becomes a luggage and a load, Check what else has taken its place. Every time the pursuit of the faith life becomes an inconvenience, 
coming to the house of God, loving Jesus, prayer, fasting, the word of God, corporate fellowship. The moment it becomes a burden, I want you to check something is wrong. Because every time you know the absence of passion by the emergence of excuses, the absence of passion is characterized by the sudden emergence of excuses. The moment there is no passion and there is no drive, you will have excuses. I am busy. You will have excuses. Don't forget what I'm telling you. You can test the absence of passion by the sudden emergence of excuses. I'm busy. I just got a promotion and I need to hurry up. So you can pray, you can fast, you can study the word of God, you can spend time with him. Something is wrong with your love life. Is someone learning? The Bible took out time to tell us the family life and other involvements of Enoch so that there is no excuse. The Bible never records that he was an irresponsible father. The Bible never records that he was an irresponsible husband. The Bible never says he was a fake prophet. You know a bit about prophecy and you know it takes a lot with God to command that level of accuracy, to speak about the coming of Christ when the dispensation was just beginning. What level of depth and heights did he touch? And yet, in spite of the earthly responsibilities, the Bible says Enoch still walked with God. That means your job is not an excuse. Is someone hearing now? That means your marriage is not an excuse. That means the presence of the children is not an excuse. The ministry enlargement is not an excuse. Kill those excuses tonight and say, Lord, I return back to the place of the altar. All of the excuses I have given, flimsy excuses, they may look justifiable, but Enoch cancels all our excuses. If you use family life as an excuse, Enoch was a family man. If you use ministry as an excuse, Enoch was a mighty prophet. If you use old age as an excuse, Enoch was a very old man and yet he walked with God. If you say it's because I'm giving my children all the time, that's why I cannot walk with God. What greater heritage to birth children and then one son who was the longest living man on earth, Enoch. Someone say no excuses. Prophesy to yourself, say no excuses. Hmm. You will always have time for what you love. As much as people say they are busy, if you hear right now that they are sharing one one million somewhere in Guagualada this night and by six o'clock it will stop energy and fire and passion and determination and zest oh bold bold stops work by 12 midnight stories you will find a way of calling a destiny helper Call it, even if the person says I'm charging you hundred thousand, you say no problem. Let's go. I will give you. If I go back with nine hundred thousand, it's still profit. For where your treasure is, where your treasure is, beloved people, don't just laugh. Where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be. Where your treasure is, if your if your treasure is your job your heart to be there if your treasure is ministry I will keep saying it for as long as I live that there is nothing there is no one there is no activity upon this earth that sustains the ability to take his place in my life I will close this ministry a thousand times and beg you with tears in my eyes and say I didn't do it because I hate you it's because I love him Abraham take now thy son thine only son whom thou lovest and offer him upon a mount that I will show you the Bible says Abraham arose early in the morning and carried Isaac to go and kill him is he would have given one of the servants and said just go and kill him for me I will tell God he is dead but to kill him by yourself
my call tonight from the life of Enoch is for everyone under the sound of my voice and those who are watching to return back to the place of intimacy with the Lord you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for oh our hearts always hunger for you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for oh our hearts always hunger for And Enoch walked with God. And Joshua Selman walked with God. And this businessman walked with God. And this preacher and this father, listen to me. There are many men today who were very spiritual before they got married and had children. When they see spiritual people or see spiritual platforms, they run away because it reminds them of their yesterday. There are people who probably years ago on campus were on fire and they loved the Lord. And they decided to use growth and age to graduate out of the school of the spirit. There are many people who love God because they had responsibilities in church. You are a deacon, you are a pastor, so you must be there for the morning prayer. The moment you take away those titles, it also goes with the fire. How many homes today do not pray? How many homes today do not fast? How many homes today there is no system of spiritual growth? The man is up and doing looking for money. The woman is up and doing carrying stories from place to place. Everybody is going from pillar to post. The children are becoming like Lucifer within the house. Please hear me. Walking with God is greater than walking with the government. Walking with God is greater than walking with Shell and NMPC. Walking with God is greater than walking with any institution on earth. May God grant you grace to work with all those desired institutions. But in addition, you must get to a point where you... Working with God is greater than working in a ministry. You give the healing and grace that my heart always oh my heart always the average believer has not cultivated intimacy with the holy spirit it is the reason why today our pain and everything that worries us goes to social media our pain and everything that worries us goes to people around because we have not known how to draw comfort from his presence those who really walk with god have known the value of his presence his presence is where we come and cry jesus when he was preparing to go to the cross he knew the burden of what was on him he went to the place of prayer and said father oh there is a place that we can cry there is a place where you can empty yourself most of where we are going to is the wrong place his presence where you can open up your heart and cry out your heart to the king of kings and the lord of lords some of you what god should do for you you are hoping friends will do it what god should do for you you are hoping social media will do it attracting sympathy from the whole world what you what god should do for you is what you think money would. listen let me tell you this the greatest of anything will fail you return back to his presence that is the place where you can cry and you know you are safe that is the place where you can roll before him 
And I'm not here to complain about my many struggles, but by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you'll solve them. But I'm here to say I love you. I'm here to say I adore you. I'm here to say I love you. I love to love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom, from the bottom of my heart, yes, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom, from the bottom of my heart. Let me show you a lover's declaration. It says, Oh God, you are my God. Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Give it to us, please, media. My soul thirsted for you. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Verse 3. Because your loving kindness is better than life. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I Can I tell you this? For many of us, you know what is your God by how frequent you run to it. So the uncle that you are always disturbing for your lifting, listen carefully. You know who and what is your God by the frequency of your visitation. Hmm. Every five minutes you are on social media searching who will... When he says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, Afterwards, you run from pillar to post. Ah. Am I wasting your time? Return to him, oh. You are God alone. From before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on. To love him above and beyond everything. He says, what shall separate us from the love of God? What shall separate us from the love of God? And he begins to list all kinds of things. He says, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Neither has it entered the heart of any man. What God has in store, not for prayer warriors, not for fasting giants, not for preachers, not for eloquent people, not for business people, but for them that love him. Them that love him. 
them that love him please hear me for someone god is calling you and he's saying i am still waiting where you left me five years ago i am still waiting man of god i'm still waiting where i was with you before invitation started coming i'm still there waiting patiently would you return back to me i am still waiting you cried and cried and cried and cried when you had no job i'm still waiting where you received your employment letter please take this as the voice of god tonight because if we don't pray for our generation this level of lukewarmness we keep marketing and giving flimsy excuses it's not about fanatism it's about passion and desire don't care don't tell me you are a preacher don't tell me you are a businessman you are a deacon you are an apostle that is none of my business simon bajona lovest thou me more than this lovest thou me more than fame lovest thou me more than ministerial exploits lovest thou me more than ministry titles lovest thou me more than money can i tell you this if you fail in everything in life but not in loving jesus you did not fail if you win in every other thing in life and fail in your love life oh dear you failed you failed do you know why most of our children today do not love god because the depth of passion they see comes from their parents and so if they see a father and a mother and leaders who are not serious about god giving flimsy excuses that becomes their templates too when a child sees his father rolling before god every day lord there is nothing i have and there is nothing i am except you one day that child will come and roll with you too even if he does not know what you are doing listen let me tell you we may not understand what you are doing now till the next 10 15 years there will rise a generation that will not honor god may god forbid it i say it again may god forbid it let it not be that it is in our lifetime we will see shrines return back to homes not just villages oh homes can i tell you this for some of you you need to suspend ministry activities for a while and go back to the altar this this deception of invitations and open door can dry you spiritually oh i'm doing ministry exploits i'm traveling from nation to nation isaiah was doing ministry when there was a call in heaven who shall go for us whereas on earth there was ministry going on all kinds of things when people clap and say joshua selman you are busy you go from place to place i just smile and respectfully say god bless you when i return back with god i say i reject deception oh god i your boy is here from where you found me may i ever remain there ministry nonsense right from the place of his presence he can honor you to bless the nations but see satan will give you ministry open doors a thousand times if it will cost you his presence oh with jesus joy he will open doors for you not every open door is anointed i've told you this thing there are doors you have to shut intentionally please return return i don't know who i'm speaking to but the holy spirit is speaking to someone return return i'm not condemning you but return god is saying i am still waiting return to the place of the altar the place of fire the place of power return to the place of his presence he called them that they would be with him and then represent him i rather be called a failure as a man of God and yet succeed and win with God than to have the accolades of men across the nations and then you do not carry any weight with God someone pray right where you are father grace to return please someone pray pray grace to return grace to return grace to return 
grace to return, oh God. Mm. Pray one minute. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Please pray one minute. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More power, more of you in my life. In the name of Jesus. Question two. The second question we have to ask and answer tonight, and then we're done. What does it mean and what does it take to please God? Remember the first question. What does it mean? And what does it take to walk with God? We said it means to love him and to prioritize him above and beyond anything this world can offer, including your own life. It means to get to a point and a state of total surrender. Now we are asking and attempting to answer the second question. What does it mean and what does it take to please God? John chapter 1 from verse 6 to seven let me tell you what it means to please God there was a man sent from God whose name was John who sent him everybody please look up if I send you to go and do something for me what then becomes my joy is it not in your doing and fulfilling what I have sent you to do? Is that true? When you return back to me and say, Sir, I have done this. In the parable of the talents, Matthew 26, don't turn there, just write for reference. The Bible says he gave unto one five talents, two and one, and then he left. The one with five went and did business and multiplied it to ten. The one with two to four and when he returned he used a statement that showed he was pleased well done good and faithful servant is that true for the last one who did not do anything he was roaming around complaining and even buried his talent he says i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow so i thought instead of wasting this let me just bury it here is your talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant what does it take and what does it mean to please God? Let's finish the scripture. John 1, 6. There was a man sent from God. That man was you. And verse 7. The Bible says the same came for a witness. Say witness. To bear witness of the light that all men through his witness might believe. Right here I have taught you this is the corporate mandate of every believer. It does not matter whether you are a businessman, a man of God on the pulpit, a politician, captain of industry, whatever it is. Our corporate mandate in this kingdom, spiritual growth 101, you have, once you know God and you want to understand his ways, you must come to this and realize that our corporate mandate is the call to be witnesses. A witness is the validator of God's claim. There is no greater way to give God joy than to bear witness to the light. It says that all men through that witness might be saved. John chapter 4 and verse 34. John 4, 34. Jesus said unto them when he walked upon the earth, My meat, that means my satisfaction, is to do the will of him that sent me. And to finish 
his walk. Is that in your Bible? When you read the prophecy of Enoch in Jude 1 from verse 14, Jude was, I mean, Enoch was calling his then generation to return back to the place of righteousness, to return back to the place where they would acknowledge the God of heaven. He called them and said, beware, he's coming with a cloud and he's coming to judge this and that and to call them back. This was what John did. John was that voice crying in the wilderness and calling the people to repent. And for a long time, he did it well, except that bitterness and offense got into him and he veered off into something else and he paid for it by dying cheaply. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. Daniel chapter 12. Let's read it together, please. Are you ready? One, two, read. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. They that turn many, not few, to righteousness. I can tell you what it takes to please God. More than studying your Bible, more than just preaching, when you are actively involved in being a witness and you use everything God has given you your beauty your talent your anointing every resource God has given you you use it to represent him and to lift up that banner of light and righteousness across the nations making your contribution towards kingdom come that is a life that pleases God that was the testimony of Enoch. The testimony of Enoch was not the accuracy of his prophecy. Unfortunately, these are the credentials we use today as men of God. These are the credentials we use today as business people. I am an accurate prophet. I am a great apostle. I am a wonderful pastor. Those things are wonderful. But if you covet the testimony of Enoch, the testimony of Enoch is not the life of a preacher. The testimony of Enoch is not the accuracy of a prophet. The testimony of Enoch is not a man who understands economic systems to amass so much wealth. The testimony of Enoch is a life that utilizes the time given and all the resources within your advantage to become the light. When you become the light indeed, you become one who pleases the father jesus had the same testimony as enoch he said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased please hear me believers may i recommend again to everyone and our global family watching please go back and listen to my birthday broadcast if you can listen to it please listen to it I thought on some things that I want you to listen to it will help to align your mind even towards this season to align with what God is doing one of the things that I taught is the power of purpose I said nothing in itself is valuable and profitable until it is connected to purpose now the challenge with the body of Christ is we teach spiritual truths in isolation to being a witness and in isolation to kingdom come any truth you teach in isolation to and with God's agenda becomes self-destructive even though it is the truth so if I teach you prosperity I teach you principles and believe me under this ministry you will learn everything when I'm teaching the series on prosperity I will teach it as if I don't teach any other thing else when I'm teaching on deliverance I will teach it I give my heart and my all because it is my job by God to see that you are holistically built but can I tell you nothing in itself profits you until it is connected to that agenda of being a witness and that agenda of kingdom come now you can learn about power because it is connected to your witness now you can learn about prosperity and not feel apologetic for it you can be reading a book on prosperity and you can confess i am a kingdom billionaire not from a carnal man's lustful communication 
but one who understands the role that that money will play in making you an effective witness and in making the kingdom come project a reality listen i can summarize christianity for you within a few sentences the entire faith life is not complicated step one jesus and everything about him the real journey for the believer starts with his encounter with jesus and that comes by hearing the message of the gospel that saves and then at the point of salvation you are now introduced to the personality of the holy spirit alongside the word of god your journey into the kingdom experience now begins at your encounter with the holy spirit and the word of god then you are given the privilege of being connected to human vessels who will now work in partnership with the word and the spirit to begin that job of methodical mentorship and growth in your life when you get to a point where you are gaining understanding and that mentorship has to be methodical teaching you the truths of the kingdom line upon line precept upon precept you get to a point where you attain a stage of commendable maturity now you are taught not only who you are and your rights we now introduce the kingdom concept to let you know that God has a responsibility over you the purpose for all the blessings the long life is that you are able to be an effective witness can I tell you only when you know your assignment as a witness and you understand the purpose behind everything God gives you, now your prayer and your wanting things will make sense. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I will never be poor. I agree with you, but to what end? I came from a background, I've suffered. I want to enjoy my life before I die. That is not a wise man's approach. I desire this wealth because based on the blueprint of the mandates given to me, I understand that kingdom financing has a, an, a major role to play in kingdom come. And since God has called me to play that role with Jesus' joy, and he will send you resources beyond your wildest imagination because there is purpose connected to it. Please hear me, believers. We have to repent and manage our blind passion for things that are not connected to God's divine program, it will always lead us to destruction. Hallelujah. Before he said, give us this day our daily bread, the prayer before it is, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. It is with respect to the kingdom, he says, give us our daily bread. It is with respect to the kingdom that he said, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is with respect to the kingdom that he says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Everything was connected to our being a witness. And Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. How did he please God? By becoming a light to his generation. A beacon that can draw men to righteousness. Can I tell you? You must spend your life making an active contribution with your life and your resources. Whether as a preacher, as a whatever it is, the geography of your witness I would always teach. Everything you have within you must work together to see Jesus glorified, to see Jesus revealed. This is true. Until and unless you get to that point, believe me, you may be a believer, but you are not pleasing the Lord. Apostle, how about the offering I gave the other time? Before your offering becomes acceptable, we will have to vet what motivated it. If it's just transaction because you are giving and you were told that money will come back, well, you may just get God to honor you mercifully because you are doing your best with what you know but that you understand that my life should count as far as being a witness is concerned you don't have to be behind the pulpit to be a witness our school of ministry students have invited us to come for their program and we'll come and watch them teach us what it means to be witnesses everybody say i am a witness one more time prophesy say i am a witness that means I am a validator of the claims of God. Yes. As a man of God, you are beyond a preacher. You are a witness. The testimony of Enoch. I made up my mind that 
at the end of my life is if Christ tarries I sincerely don't want to be known just for being a great preacher a miracle worker great leader thank God for all of these things but if there is any testimony I covet in my life it is this right here the testimony of Enoch and Joshua Selman walked with God and he had a testimony that he pleased God if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold and I will tell it to my world Jesus is more than gold if all I do is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to my world Jesus is more We used to sing a song before. I pledge allegiance to the Don't sing it if you don't believe it. With all my heart, with all I am, I will see to honor his coming. I pledge allegiance to the land some of you these are the songs you sang when you got born again these are the songs you sang when you were serious with God before something else came to distract you you've had my message please return he's still waiting you see the beautiful thing with Jesus is that for as long as you are ready to return his arms are wide open to receive you again. The prodigal son said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. He says, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. The Bible says, as he got up and was moving, while he was afar off, he saw his father. And the father came and embraced him and kissed him put that garment of royalty upon him and restored the signet ring hmm. this is not about fanatism this is not about irrational pursuit that brings imbalance and destroys every area of your life this is reordering your life in a way that makes you excel holistically there are many people who in a bid to show that they love Jesus Christ, they become so fanatic in an imbalanced way that their life overall looks miserable. It is not an attractive template of a witness. Can I tell you, you will never give him all and become a non-entity. He will reorder your life and make sure the other things you have left for him will return to you with honor and with dignity. My life is a testimony. Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, you never let me go. My shepherd king, you're watching over me. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Jesus Christ, you never let me go. My shepherd king, you're watching over me. Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Listen, beloved people. I brought you this message from the throne there are many testimonies you desire in your life like the testimony of a celebrity nothing wrong with it the testimony of an entrepreneur who started from nothing and became the greatest voice within his territory noble testimony 
the testimony of a great and responsible father noble testimony the testimony of a diligent person who pushed through all the limitations to become great noble testimony the testimony of one who fought his way from idolatry to encounter Jesus noble testimony but tonight's teaching is a call to embrace the noblest testimony that anyone can have it is called the testimony of Enoch and Enoch the seventh man from creation from Adam walked with God and he had this testimony Hebrews 11 and verse 5 that he pleased God that's it as busy as we are if all that we are doing is not pleasing God I assure you we are wasting our time and wasting the gift of time God gave us you notice I've been singing a particular song I will sing it one more time again please allow me sing it worship team you listen to me this one is a message not a special number as I sing it I want you to listen when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did I do my best to live for truth did I live my life for you Lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious joy in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life Lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious joy in married clay turning sinners into saints Yeshua Yeshua Hamashiach Yeshua one more time. Come It's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. 
As if you should do things my way You alone are God And I surrender I'll sing it one more time and we'll pray It's all about you Jesus And all this is for you It's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God and I surrender we're going to pray but without wasting time let me make the altar call right away right away I don't know what else to tell you if you are here and on hearing everything I have said you know that you need Jesus whether in the main auditorium all the overflows outside following online there's no point cajoling and plaguing with your psychology this is an issue of life and death there has to be somebody here saying I covet the testimony of Enoch that I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka. Hey, You will search and search all the earth. You will search and search over the earth, and you will find that Babuani Kamaraka. We have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babuani Kamaraka. Babu wani kamaruka Babu wani kamaruka Ya Yesu Ya Yesu Babu wani kamaruka Please if you are coming I like you to run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand before Jesus Finally I found the key to peace I found the key to grace whether you are a man of God, whether you are a businessman, it does not matter. Come to Jesus. He's calling you. Apostle, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but things have gone haywire. Can I come? Please join them. Join them quickly. We have searched and searched all the earth. Searched and searched all the earth. And we have found that. Listen, let me tell you the truth. An altar call. You see, an altar is a place of transference and exchange. An altar is also a place of authorization. So when you come to the altar, you are coming to the place where your weaknesses and your limitations are exchanged for his strength he says let us therefore come boldly boldly to the throne of grace please if you are coming rush i'm about to pray now you cannot imagine how it gladdens my heart when i see people run to jesus it is not because i'm a preacher believe me this pleases the father and enoch walked with god if Enoch were a preacher in our days, 
he would cry like John the Baptist in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord he may Enoch has been translated but God has kept some of us me and you to continue that ministry though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever holy is the lord holy is the lord please lift your right hand high above your head unashamedly you are standing before the lover of your soul men can condemn you men can talk about you but here you are in the presence of one who loved you and gave himself for you i don't care what you have done or not done i don't care what has worked or not worked when you come to jesus you come as you are and then you trust his saving power please say this after me loud and clear from the depth of your heart you are talking to jesus who is in our midst here those outside all the overflows Please make sure you pray this from the depth of your heart. And for someone who might be watching by way of television or internet, and you may be in your room, your office, you're sitting on your sofa, and you are saying, can Jesus meet me at that point? Yes, sir. Where can we hide from his presence? So as I lead God's people to pray, make sure you pray and let it be from the depth of your heart. Lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I desire to love you. I desire to walk with you. And I desire to please you. Right now, I repent of my sins. And I confess that Jesus is my Savior. The one who died for me. Jesus is my Lord. And Jesus is my King. I declare that the power of sin of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life from tonight i declare that i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb i declare that i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name keep your hands lifted and i pray for you father thank you it is always a joy to watch people come before the cross and lord you have drawn these ones even by your spirit i declare by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven and in the name of jesus the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight you walk in the newness of life i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus you go forward ever and backward never for in jesus name we pray for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Now very quickly, let me encourage you, please. I'd like you to move to my right. There are counselors waving their hands to lovingly receive you, have a word for you, and then you quickly return back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go very quickly. Let's honor them as they go. Hallelujah. Is that the best you can do, Koinonia? hallelujah please rise up on your feet and let's pray we always end our teaching sessions with a moment and a time of prayer hallelujah we have just two or three prayer points tonight and then we're done for this service prayer point number one take over take over i have come to the end of myself Take over, Jehovah, I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. I have touched the end of myself. Father, I lay aside every weight and the sin that does easily beset me and I run with perseverance the race that is set before me looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of my faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame please lift your voice and pray father everything that has stolen your place in my life let there be that reordering reordering be exalted be exalted be lifted above fame above ministry above my pursuit for resources someone is praying be lifted be lifted be lifted i exalt you someone is praying i came to church tonight and i have been taught that there is a nobler pursuit to walk with God and to please God captured in the testimony of Enoch I desire to walk with you I desire to love you I desire to serve you if someone pray I lay aside every weight the sin that doth easily beset me inside outside are you praying hallelujah hallelujah when Isaiah saw the Lord he was broken and even though he was a great prophet he cried and he said woe is me i am undone i am a man of unclean lips and i live among a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the lamb upon the throne who reigns forevermore that was isaiah's prayer prayer point number two lord whatever it takes to walk with you throughout my lifetime make it available for me be engracing someone pray please help those under the anointing someone pray whatever it will take the resources the consecration the passion the drive the discipline i obtain in the name of jesus christ I obtain in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Final prayer point. Hebrews 11 and verse 5. One of the patriarchs that the Bible says we should follow. He was translated so that he would not see death. And was not found because God had translated him for before his transition translation he had this testimony that he pleased god someone pray let my life capture the testimony of enoch that i am a father pleaser i am a god pleaser not just a god chaser not just a god worshiper i am a god pleaser that my entire life will be a witness someone pray my life will be a beacon of light even in this dark world a light in business a light in ministry a light to the nations that gentiles will come to my light and even their kings to the brightness of my rising someone pray whatever it takes to be a god pleaser prosperity health influence grace speed restoration testimonies whatever it would take for my life to please the father results i obtain in the name of jesus hallelujah 
Must I go an empty hand? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty hand and go? We used to sing these hymns in the seminary. It didn't make sense to us those days. The hymn was too long. We wanted them to cut the stanza first and last so we'll go and eat. But now we can discern the richness that is in that to bring joy. That you will stand before Jesus having spent your life and you will watch many people around you, pastor, you will watch many people, businessman, and they will say, I am alive. That was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. There was a ministry sent from God. The name was Koinonia. The same came to bear witness of the light not to build empires not to exalt a man in the name of geo or president or whatever it is sent from god to spend our life let me remind you whether you like it or not someday i will keep saying it till it enters your spirit this life will be wrapped up and rolled like a curtain whether we like it or not he says teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom for some of you god is calling you to fade away a life of foolishness and time wastage it's time to begin to walk circumspect as wise and not as unwise redeeming the time because in truth the days are evil may it be that when he comes or when we meet him that we will truly truly stand tall and proud not just that we gave our lives to him but we spent our lives being witnesses till he returns or calls me home here in the love of christ one more time till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ, I say. I release grace upon you to love the Lord. May you desire him from the depth of my heart. The Lord who has shown me mercy and helped me to know him and love him. May that passion rest upon you. The grace to love him beyond any material thing in this life. Receive that grace right now. The grace to walk with him. Receive that grace. The grace to live for him. Receive that grace. The grace to be an effective witness. Receive that grace. The grace to please him. Receive that grace. For in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Give him a big hand clap. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like 
for us. Thank you. <laughs>